Hey friends, is is this the 13th Sunday after Pentecost? I'm afraid I've lost count. I haven't kept close track. Well, the baptism of Jack Ritterbush is part of the service. It's posted here, and uh, you may want to take a look at that. It's part of the sermon here too. Let's hear from our reading from Romans today. Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here ends the reading. And our gospel reading is from the 16th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are set in your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that along with Jack, you have made us your own through water and the word. Wash us, O God, with your love. Unite us, O God, with one another that we may serve you faithfully and well. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You probably know what carpe diem means. Carpe diem, seize the day. Live life as fully as possible, right? I did a Google search of carpe diem. There were 38 Point four million hits. Seize the day. Now, one article said that it's a mistranslation to say carpe diem is seize the day, but it was sort of technical, and uh, that would wreck my sermon. So never mind that. 38 million. The call seize the day hits a nerve. People want to make the most of their lives. They want to go for the gusto to make every second count and to live while the living is good. 
They want to wrest everything they can from their world. We might well suggest that Scripture often addresses the question of how we should live our lives, of of how you might live the fullest life you can. It often does so in ways that differ considerably from most of those 38.4 million websites. Let love be genuine, Paul says. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. These words from the 12th chapter of Romans sound a call to a lifestyle grounded in the love that Jesus has for all the world. The shape of the life of a Christian person is determined not by what will get you the most, but by what will bring God's love to your neighbor. As one baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the shape of your life is determined not by market forces, but by the cross of Jesus. This will be a guide for Jack as well as he joins his parents, his grandparents, his baptismal sponsors and uncle and you in his journey with Jesus. Our gospel story today has some surprising insights into Peter and to what it means to follow Jesus. Think about it. How often is the leader of a community shown with all his or her foibles and shortcomings? How often do our own leaders seek to avoid admitting to the slightest mistake? Can you imagine either of our presidential candidates' campaigns talking about one of their candidates' shortcomings? (laughs) Even if they could admit to themselves any fault that they bear, I don't think they would admit it publicly. Now, it's fun to pick on politicians, but how often are you and I like that too? Much of the difficulties in our relationships lay in this complex mix of our own faults and how our faults impact others. Peter, the rock on which the church shall be built, is shown here in the Gospel of Matthew, not supporting our Lord, but tempting and blocking him. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. We should remember that just like last week, we heard the first half of this episode when Peter made his great confession, you are the Christ. And Jesus said of him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Peter, the rock, Rocky Balboa, Simon, Peter, foundation of the church. Here he is at the top of his game, the leader of this band of followers. And the next thing we know, He's reprimanded by Jesus. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block. Now, at this point in the story, we might want to distance ourselves from Peter and his misguided ways. But Jesus states quite clearly that this is not only Peter's problem. It's a waywardness shared by us all. For you are setting your mind, Peter, not on divine things, but on human things. We could criticize Peter, but he only wants what is best for Jesus, right? Now, it's true that uh, it might be self-serving because if Jesus does well, Peter does too. But there is, for certain, a great measure of love and care for Jesus as Peter tries to steer him on a different path. Peter loves Jesus, and the last thing he wants to see for him is is suffering and pain 
rejection, and death. And yet Jesus tells Peter and the disciples that this is the way that God has chosen to act. While Peter and the disciples cannot understand, they will know the power and truth of God's ways soon enough. They will learn God's way to the richest life, not through success and power and ease and comfort, not at all. God will show the mystery of God's power through suffering love. God will show the mystery of God's ways in, of all things, powerlessness that will go all the way to the cross to suffer whatever the world will dish out. Carpe diem, seize the day. It's a call that resonates for us all. We want the richest of lives. We want the very best for those we love for Jack and for his parents as well. We want their lives, our own lives, to be lived out to the greatest potential. In the end, each one of us wants to bear meaning and purpose in this life. The story of Peter and the disciples as they converse with Jesus brings this to the fore. What does it mean to live the fullest life possible. Is there something for us to seize? Something for us to grab onto, to take hold of? How can we achieve that best life that we want for ourselves and those we love? What should be the shape of Tommy and Grant's dreams for their son Jack? What would be the best life for little Jack? Wealth and fame? Health and happiness, love and service. What is the shape of your best life? Is there anything that you have to seize to accomplish that which is the fullest life for you? What do you have to do? Is there some decision you must make, some thoughts you must think? Shall I, shall I suggest that rather than carpe diem, it's carpe crux, Seize the cross. No, like Jack here, that which is needed has been given. Rather than a call for you to seize the day or to seize anything, you are called to get behind Jesus and follow. And so to Jack, to his parents and family, and to you, hear this call. Receive the gift that's been given. Live in the love that has been poured out for you. Follow Jesus' life, which is service, love, and compassion. Follow his love, which is self-giving passion. Follow his way, which is not like human ways of striving and seizing, grasping and hoarding. Follow God's way of giving, forgiving, loving, and serving. Take up your cross and follow. And there you will find the richest life there is. Amen.